Is Adidas Boost or Bounce Foam better for you if you're an athlete? Because depending on what type of athlete you are and what sport you play, each one of these midsole shoe foams is going to have vastly different performance characteristics. So let's find out what they are. Hey everybody, it's Acker, YouTube Foot Doctor, and typically on this channel we are cutting shoes open to see what shoe technology is really worth spending your money on, and today we're going to compare two of the most popular midsole shoe foams out there, and that's Adidas Boost and Bounce Foam. And while both of these midsole shoe foams are well engineered, they both have much different actual performance characteristics that suit much different athletes better or worse than others. So let's start with Boost Foam. What really is it? Now Boost Foam is actually expanded thermopolyurethane, or ETPU for short. Now what that means is it's actually these expanded bubbles of plastic because ETPU is actually a plastic based foam. Now what these bubbles do is they expand and they inject air into them so you're actually walking around in these air pods. And now Adidas claims that this particular boost midsole foam gives you better energy absorption, better energy return, and better temperature stabilization. But in reality because of the volume of the air pods in there these boost foam shoes are actually really good for that energy absorption and they're really good for dispersing energy and dispersing weight. However, when it comes to energy return, these shoes actually leave a little bit to be desired. Because the thought process is when those air bubbles compress, they then expand back up again. But typically in practice, what ends up happening is those air bubbles compress and they slowly begin to expand again, which does give you a lot of energy absorption, protects your foot from stress fractures or other types of repetitive stress injuries. However, when it comes to that performance, those air bubbles just can't expand fast enough to give you that really explosive movement that Boost claims that they can give you. Now, one way to get around this is to either double or even triple the amount of air pods that are in the Boost foam. However, that's going to make the shoe a lot heavier and even more expensive than they already are. Now, Bounce Foam midsoles are actually made of what's called EVA, that's short for ethylene vinyl acetate. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, that's because number one, a lot of shoes are made of EVA, and number two, if you've seen any cosplay like at San Diego Comic Con, most of those cosplay costumes are actually made of EVA because it's so moldable, and if you press into it hard enough, it'll actually deform and stay deformed, so you can make little dimples or ridges in a costume. That's how deformable EVA EVA is. But when Adidas was designing the bounce midsole foam for athletes, what they did was they actually used the same system that NASA used to use to inspect the hulls of the space shuttle. And what they did was they found where the most stress and strain was on the human foot. And then what they had decided to do was inject more elastic particles into that EVA to give this midsole foam, number one, the accommodation, the nice type fit that the EVA gives you, but also more, for lack of a better word, bounce in elasticity to give the shoe a little bit more of a pop off the first step. And so from that, you get a lot more of a lighter midsole foam like EVA does, but you also get more elasticity that they're trying to get in the boost foam. However, you got to remember that the bounce foam midsole is still EVA, so over time, it is still going to bottom out. It is not going to be as resistant to wear as the boost foam will be. And that's just the nature of the boost foam being made of more durable plastics, whereas the bounce foam is made of that less durable EVA. However, when both makes of shoe are brand new right out of the box, the bounce foam is going to perform a lot better than the boost foam is going to for pure raw athletic performance. And a prime example of this can be found on the professional tennis tour. Last year's US Open winner, Dominic Team endorses a Boost model shoe, the Adidas Soul Court Boost. However, when he has his custom shoes put together for him, he's using the upper of the Adidas Soul Court Boost. However, the midsole is a bounce midsole. And the reason for that is he's only using the shoes through their peak performance cycle. Once this shoe kind of lacks a little bit of performance, he dumps it and goes to the next shoe. Adidas just sends him another one. Whereas you and me who are not having shoes sent to us weekly by Adidas, Adidas really can get a lot more use and a lot more durable use out of that boost midsole. But what Dominic Team has figured out, as well as Garabin Muguruza on the women's store, who does the same thing, have found out that you can just get a little bit more pop off your serve. You can get a little bit more speed off that first step. You can get a little bit more edge when cutting side to side because of that EVA foam and that elasticity of that EVA foam. Just gives you a little bit more of a sharper turn off the edges, gives you a little bit more, for lack of a better word, bounce off your first step. And that can really translate to any sport. If you're a basketball player looking for a little bit more height on your jump shot or your layup, the bounce midsole is going to give you a little bit more energy return. The more you give it, the more it's going to give to you. If you're a runner and you're looking for a little bit of a speedier shoe for race day, you're going to want to go with a new pair of Adidas bounce midsole shoes. Whereas if you're just looking for a shoe to prevent more chronic repetitive injuries, you're going to want to go for that bounce midsole. 
And this also has a lot to do with your body type. The bigger and heavier you are, the more you're going to benefit from a boost midsole because you're going to need that to disperse all that energy. If you're also a big muscular athlete, you also can bring a little bit more of that energy to the shoe. You're just looking for a shoe that's going to help disperse weight and disperse energy to stop you from getting stress fractures, tendonitis, or some of those other chronic repetitive injuries. Where if you're a lighter, more slender athlete, the bounce midsole is actually going to give you a little bit more energy return because you don't need a shoe that's going to accommodate all that weight and bulk. You just need a shoe for a little bit more performance. And that's why you see these players on the pro tennis tour going with the bounce foam midsole because while it's new, it provides a lot of the same benefits that Boost does, but also with just that slightly better athletic, pure athletic performance. And also in sports where millimeters or seconds can count, just a little bit of a lighter midsole foam versus that heavier boost foam can be the difference between crossing that finish line first, getting to that drop shot, or maybe kind of fading away just a little bit higher than your opponent to get your hand a little bit higher than theirs to make that jump shot. But also, I'd love to know what you think. Are you more of a fan of the boost midsole or bounce midsole for your particular sport? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see the insides of your favorite tennis shoes, make sure you click into the playlist up above. I'll see you in the next video.